<laughs> Zafrank. It's no longer Zafrank. I, I literally it, it, just saw that. It is Zafrank. So Zafrank. I don't even have to say that numeral anymore. It's just Zafrank. Has a new video. It came out a couple of days ago. And it is True Facts Animal Awards Best Worst Jumping and More. It has to be a spotter. Like oh. the, the, the best worst would be a spotter. But what yeah. other thing jumps besides kangaroo? <laughs> what, like what? like, like animals. Jumps. Nothing that else. is the worst. Kangaroos, gazelles, there's tons of things that jump. Spiders. That's I've the seen, only thing I can think of. I've seen pit bulls jump up and like grab ropes that are hanging from trees and I shake around. I think it's around only going to be like insects and gross stuff because that's usually what he talks about. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, but anyway, only one way to know. Here we go. Let's go. Welcome oh to the True Fans Animal stuff. Awards. Celebrating animals with awards. I like it. No, oh Jenny, that is mad gravitas. Whatever. In the category of best worst jumping, there were quite a few entries. I mean, come on, it's not rocket science to be awesome at being terrible at jumping. In fact, rocket science would really screw you in this category. A notable entry was the globular springtail. It's a great Whoa. launch and looks quite acrobatic. All tucked in like that, full rotations. <laughs> and then he takes it right on the face. <laughs> Look at him sliding away. <laughs> Keep cool, they'll think it's on purpose. <laughs> but if you want to win this category, you have to go up against frogs oh, in the genus Brachycephalus. Oh, Look at it, it's not dead. I mean, these guys are famous for bad jumping. They're not happy about it. You know, some of them have glow-in-the-dark bones. Why not be famous for that? But the deal with Brachycephalus Whoa. is that they really went all in on the miniaturization thing. They're f***ing tiny. Some of the smallest Whoa. vertebrates on Earth. So, bravo. But to get that small, there's sacrifices. They lost some toes and fingers along the way. There's a couple of species that seem to have lost the ability to hear their own mating calls, which is a bit poetically heartbreaking. I mean, the deal is that some equipment just doesn't scale down all that well. In particular, there's this little organ that vertebrates have made of three loops that stick out in different directions. It's inside the ear. When accelerated, fluid inside those loops slosh around and trigger little sensory hairs, which help the brain figure out how to balance and maintain posture. Turns out there's a limit to how small you can shrink this before Aww. the system breaks down. So when they jump, their little bodies aren't getting oh. information about what the hell's happening. So the best strategy seems now to I get be into bed. stiffen up and stretch out. Staying big helps reduce the rotations. But it turns out that Brachycephalus uh, isn't the uh, only group of frogs that have a complicated up. relationship with the jump. First, let's remind ourselves what normal frog jumping looks like. This here is Bombina orientalis. A nice looking Graceful. jump and then the arms come forward to brace for impact and the hind legs kind of follow through. The end result being that it's ready for the next jump very soon after landing. All right, so you've seen how it's supposed to be done. Now there's a group of frogs in the genus Liaipelma that split off from other frogs about 200 million years ago. Let's take a look at their form. <laughs> See if you can spot the difference. <laughs> Wait for it. Oh. Oh no. Oh. No, no. <laughs> it's amazing. Buddy. Here's another one, <laughs> just so you don't think it's one drunk frog. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. All right, you're probably wondering what the f is wrong with them. So it's thought that the taking off part of jumping evolved first as an escape mechanism into water. The landing bit right. evolved later when frogs became more terrestrial. These old school frogs never really got into jumping and never evolved a way to gracefully land. But still, no match for our winner, <laughs> Brachycephalus. <laughs> Next up, That's we hilarious. have best animal call, subcategory clown shoes. Oh my oh, God. Wow. <laughs> this one's the winner. <laughs> it's perfect. In the category nature photographer I want to party with, ah, it's a pygmy yeti. I what joke the with hell? you. It's a pregnant meerkat. Oh. But who decides to film that angle? <laughs> Hold on, guys. There's a shot I gotta get. And the meerkat who's on the lookout <laughs> chooses to ignore the weirdo lying beneath her filming her crotch. <laughs> pygmy yeti. <laughs> hey, Tina, Lori, check... Oh, hey, Nancy. Guys, check this out. Ready? Hold on, I got him. All right. <laughs> Did you see it? What the f***? <laughs> How could you not notice that? Hunt a Killer makes these immersive murder mystery games. Mm. I recently played this one, Dead Below Deck. 
comes in a box with tons of clues and a mystery for you to solve. In this case, it happened on a luxury cruise and there was a dead body. Not in the box. They don't ship you a dead body. You can bring your own. Anyways, <laughs> there's tons of clues and evidence and you have to make timelines and crack codes. Like and to clue. figure out how to get uh. into this thing. And no, I won't tell you what's inside. And that's not the combination either. Suck it. You and your friends get to be detectives, but it's not role play. Unless that's your thing, no judgment. It's all very realistic. And by the end, you know the suspects on a first name basis. There's a whole bunch of different games to choose from, too, with different themes and different levels of difficulty. Hmm. There's even multi-part games that unfold over a series of episodes. The bottom line is that it's a fun way to be with real people in a real place, doing something collaborative that only requires a sharp eye and a dash of clever. Head over to huntakiller.com slash zayfrank. Use code ZEFRANK for 10% off your order of immersive mystery right? games today. I'm a fan and happy to have Hunter Killer as a sponsor. Where were we? Oh, right. In the category Fun Fashion on a Budget, the winners are leaf beetles in the family Chrysomelidae. Wow. Some of these baby beetles hold on to body parts that they shed in a molt. It's like wearing a what? coat made out of a sunburn peel. Others use their own feces to create oh. a sort of defensive shield. It's like Captain America reimagined by a fetish pornographer. What? <laughs> you wanna see how it's done? Sure. This is the larva of a tortoise beetle in the process of adding excrement to those two things that sort of arch over its body, sometimes referred to as an anal fork, two words that should not be that close together. Anyway, these shields <laughs> grow over time and you have to learn how to maneuver them. It's like trying to walk down Fifth Avenue with an umbrella. This aphid's like, oh, that's a cool hat. Where'd you get? Oh, for the love of God. You're wearing sh... And you can imagine that once this becomes a fashion trend, everyone walks in, tries to outdo each, other, outdo each other, and it gets a bit out of hand, to be honest. Really smacks against most of the current conventions in fashion. I mean, there are some classier presentations. Hemispherata cyania, for example, creates a fecal thatch, which looks like a pile of shoestring potatoes I'd be happy to have next to my ribeye. The larva is hidden underneath it, and it creates those long strands of feces using what is called an anal turret. And look at that, <laughs> an anal, anal fork turret. is actually a stack of anal oh forks from its former bodies. Butt beetles in the sorry, but beetles <laughs> in the genus Neoclamysis went all in on this strategy of looking like crap. This right here is a mummy beetle, and she's laid an egg underneath a leaf. Then she carefully encases it in a little onesie made out of her own feces. When the egg hatches, the larva emerges, but then it flips over and carries its mummy's poop house on its back. <gasps> but the larva needs to grow, so it starts to add its own feces to its surroundings. How does it do that? Well, <laughs> they figured that out. <laughs> to see where the poop was being added, a science hippie painted that little turd hat. A few oh. hours later, you can see where the new stuff was added. No! I'm doing that over and over again, and you can put a little element of surprise for the kids <laughs> on Easter morning. Anyway, this goes on until they pupate inside of a ball of their own crap. And what emerges is a warty leaf beetle. And warty leaf beetles have evolved to mimic caterpillar poop. Here, can you tell which one's the beetle? You can't, because they hide their arms and legs like little transformers. Except they don't transform into cars, they transform into sh- Here, you can see the little <laughs> antennae peeking out. I know what you're thinking. There must be a lot of caterpillar poo if things evolve to look like it. Well, unlike the beetles, the caterpillars want nothing to do with their excrement. This right here is a skipper caterpillar, and it's just about to poop. Ready? It's like a magic trick. I mean, that clown would get arrested, but still. For years, it was assumed that the poop was sort of flicked by something ah! called an anal comb. It turns out this structure is more of a latch, allowing blood pressure to build up behind it and deform an <laughs> anal plate. And that pressure in the latch trips, and the whole thing sort of squeeze pops off like a tiddlywink. And they figured some of this out by painting spots on the butt of a caterpillar, and then seeing how the paint was transferred to the poop pellet. It's what happens when your parents don't let you go to art school. Oh Sharpshooters in the family Cicadelidae have a similar thing going, except with urine. They eat plant juice, which is essentially 95% water. And that means they have to pee a lot. A lot. Like 300 times their body weight. And you want to put some distance between you and that puddle. So they have something called an anal stylus, which has some hard parts to it and some springy parts. They squeeze out a little droplet onto that stylus. And then the stylus springy parts load up like a well, spring. And then pop, the whole thing goes off. The cool thing is, is that the water droplet moves faster than the stylus flicked. And that's because the sharpshooter takes advantage of the fact that water droplets can act like little rubber balls. If you accelerate them just right, the droplet will have time to compress and expand, exerting an additional force on the pushing surface. 
and this allows the droplet to fly faster than the flicker flicked, which is great because it gets the pea far away, and it also requires less energy from the sharpshooter compared to like, you know, peeing in a stream, not in a stream, like in the form of a stream, what like we do it, unless you bug, do it different, dude. no judgment. Finally, in the category of most creative home security system, the winner is this Asiatic honeybee, Apis serrata. These bees have a problem. Their hives often get attacked by groups of these giant hornets, so they decided to do something about it. <laughs> Here's one of those bees out on a big pile of animal feces. I know what you're saying, so what, everyone's got their thing, but this bee is collecting that feces. Here, you can see one with a little nugget tucked between its mouth parts. It's not just that one either, they're all doing it. And so what happens is they bring it back to the entrance of their hive and do a little plastering job. Lo and behold, if you smear a bunch of shit around your doorway, you get fewer visitors. It's brilliant. I'm sure they laughed That's at the first bee that do. came up with well, it. Benny, be on that one. what you doing there? Sorry, I can't understand you, Benny. Your mouth is full. Uh, all right, I'll leave you to it. Okay, Benny? Weirdo. It's insightful and uh, horrifying at the same time. I knew that it was going to be gross, weird animal stuff or, or insect stuff. Uh, somebody in the comments, anal turret. <laughs> anal turret, dude. That's that's pretty funny. That, that should have been Taco Bell caterpillar. Taco Bell caterpillar. <laughs> Dropping boobs. He doing the big flip. The frogs, dude. The frogs were something oh, that I found to be I really funny. They were just like... <laughs> they needed to put like a... Like, uh, fucking ballet music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bum, 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 yeah. Bum, bum, yeah. Bum, and then it just flies in the bum, air. Yeah. Uh, doo doo monsters. Jesus Christ. Oh, my Christ. God. What the hell was that? Two words. And the two objects that should, and the two objects that should not go together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah. what if there was a war between the caterpillars that shot tires and the little like Beetles? grasshopper things that oh, looked like they flicked pee? Like, and they were like, like who goes ah. further? No, they were just attacking oh, each other. Oh, atta with an attack. Well, yeah. That shit would be funny. Dude, those, literally. Those little beetles that like imitate poop. Or, okay, I get imitating poop. That makes sense. That's a good camouflage. Look, just how, to look like shit all the time, right? Okay. How are they not the dung beetles? But the ones that, like, put poop on them and then just, like, keep yeah. adding on How are to they it? not the dung beetles? That would make more sense than the ones who just push it around. I don't know. It's both fucking nasty. It's gross. I'm surprised about the bees. It's gross. That's smart, but weird. Like, <laughs> one bee one like, day had to be, like... No, or I not, deal with yeah, this shit. Yeah, a bee, not an ant. One bee, one day, would have just had to been like, hey guys, like, just hear me out. Nobody likes this. Yeah. Next thing you know, they can't Mouth keep the flies from fucking, showing up. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder how they handle that. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Anopolis. Bruh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I'm done with that. Thank you guys very much for uh, for hanging out with us as we watch the ever wonderful Z Frank. He will send you into uh, convulsions from either laughter or nightmare fuel. Yes. Um, but good video. If you haven't subscribed to Z Frank, I recommend you do that. If you're interested in animal facts put forth in a very humorous way, yes. uh, he does a great job with that. In fact, you could say he's one of the best. Yeah. I think that. Uh, it's probably 10 years ago at least that I first saw his videos and I've always appreciated them. If you enjoyed our reaction to this, you can give us a like, subscribe to the channel. If you have a recommendation for us, well, I don't know what you're going to do. Hmm. 10 minutes later. Um, you can drop those in the comments on our Discord, on our Patreon, or on our Twitch where we're live every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can join in and be a part of the comments just like a bunch of folks over here right now. Yeah, we got Jake Chavez, um, Koala Squill. Koval Squit? Koval Squee? I don't know, we, we can't read. Aquafinussy <laughs> Connoisseur, Dr. Dell, um, Jake Nanopoulos, a whole bunch of homies hanging out. Thank you guys for tuning in for this one. We appreciate you, and we will see you in the next one. See you one. guys. Bye.